Hey guys, this is Rainwolf, and we're back with 86. Hey guys, Kirito Silverheart here. And this is Austin the Silverheart. And we're going to start this off with some sad news. This will be the last episode for 86 until about March time frame, uh, since they have announced that there will be delays for the next two episodes. Yeah, apparently the uh, studio is really focusing on the quality of the production, which, I mean, personally, I'm, I'm kind of happy to hear that they're not going to put out some half-assed product on us. But at the same time, especially when we get to the, you know, discussion of this actual episode, the <laughs> the the weight is going to be a struggle. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. So as we're going into it, um, it pretty much gives us the date. It's panning over of the place where they were before this battle starts. Then it pops over to Raiden's cockpit with Federica. He's talking to her um, and asking her, if I told you to ignore everybody but that idiot and go, could you? And at first, I really didn't know what he was getting at in this situation. Oh, I knew but immediately. <laughs> you know Raiden is the number one person that looks out for Shin. Yeah. And Raiden's not stupid. He knows that they have this psychic connection between the two of them. So if anybody's going to break through and be able to get to him it, the way he needs to be gotten to. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, at any moment, Shin could do exactly what he just did. He could mute himself. He could disconnect, yeah. you know, and then, God forbid, you know, if something were to happen to the rest of the crew and it's just Shin and Frederica out there, then he has to have somebody he can rely on. Yeah. And they're running and then it pans over to them running all on the side of this cliff trying to avoid most of the units then they they take out the ones the smaller units that are fit chasing them on the cliff but you have the lows down below then a low ends up pretty much using the other one as a tripod and fires yeah. at them <laughs> like that's brilliant in my opinion like you had th- you had it looked like six lows down there three of them put themselves down as bases and the other three perked themselves up to start unloading on this ridge. Mm-hmm. And the sad thing is, one of the shots ends up hitting the rocks just right underneath Andrew's back feet. So she ends up losing traction completely and going down the ledge. Mm-hmm. And I was, during this moment, I was like, oh, please don't tell me you're going to start killing people off. <laughs> That's what it almost looked like, too. Especially <laughs> when uh, when we see those diagnostics pop up on her screen. Like and the way she says the fight her head. Yeah. And all of a sudden it pops up on her little side panel of her screen. It's just like possible concussion, blunt force trauma, mm. you know, and I'm just like, oh, she got rocked good. Mm. And when she shouts out the Fido to leave the rest of the shells that he has, he didn't like the idea, but he knew he had to <laughs> because you saw the shake he gave mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> before he dropped them. So, as we're going on, it eventually becomes a one-on-one thing. Next is Theo, while they're in the congested city, some shots get fired at them. And Theo pretty much pulls what Shin did at the back where they left San Magnolia. <laughs> yeah, pulls down the rock, or pulls down the building. Yes. Separates himself from the rest of the team and was just like, ah, I work better in this type of scenario anyway. Bye! Yeah. It, sad to say, he, it's kind of true because we've seen him shine in definitely when they first did the all out attack. Yeah, like a single combat. Yeah. He's close terrain. Mm hmm. He's really good at it. And it it was kind of fitting because the way Shin had done them, he, I mean, Theo just did the same thing. He was like, if you're going to mm-hmm. be dramatic, I'm going to be dramatic too. So. And it switches over to Kiri for a minute. He's like, Oh, you're cold, leaving your allies behind. Because he sees them being left one by one on his radar. But that's not how it's going. No. Mm-hmm. They're choosing to stay behind. And he's like, no one's going to interfere. Then he starts firing off shots that causes them to scatter. Sniping is starting to take play now. From the name, I'm always still going to slaughter. Karina. <laughs> Karina. She starts firing off those shells. And she even tells him, go ahead. It's like... They aren't concentrated. Go. This is a better place for me anyway. Uh, I like the fact that Karina is now showing a more focused understanding of the battlefield and the tactics that are going to be required. You yes. know, she's she's calling out that, you know, scatter shots being used. It's not going to deal a metric ton of damage, 
but it's enough to cause a distraction. I think it also helps a lot that now they have units that are to their specific abilities, not like the Juggernauts where they're all the same. Yeah, they, this it's much more specialized than it was before. I think she's getting older, too. Because you have to remember how young she was in comparison to the other ones. And when the war started, like they said, she wasn't even in school yet. So she's, she's had a lot of growth. Yeah, she's definitely had a lot lot of growth character-wise. And I kind and, of think yeah. Federica kind of shoved that a little more. I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> she's not the youngest anymore. So Yeah. As we're going on, as, as they're about to leave... Karina behind it goes back over to Kiri and he's like you see him down his sights we kind of go off the well I know I did a little bit I'm not sure of the other two but of who was coming close because in the last episode near the end it was like unexpected guests are getting closer but there was no specific idea on who it was then we're still, getting the <laughs> yeah I still almost feel like he was talking about Shin's group Mm. But I don't know, because yeah. there are so many things that get brought up. <laughs> yes, definitely in this episode and in the last details, too, because when they were spreading out the units to cause a distraction. Mm -hmm. So with this, I brought this up because even with this, it's like even those who aren't invited are getting closer. And he fires a round that goes straight over their head. Yeah, I mean, the fact that uh, he makes that comment. And we also start to see even more how focused he is on Shin. Mm -hmm. Like, Shin's, if you look at Kiri's uh, screen, Shin's unit is the only one that is actually titled. Yeah. Everything else is just like, you know, enemy one, enemy two, enemy three. <laughs> Shin's the one that he's focused on. And it's mm -hmm. scary that he's yeah. got that much of a bloodlust for mm -hmm. him. I think it's because he sees him as an equal. And he sees him as a challenge, and he wants that. And I, I think that's why. I think that's why he has such like a heavy bloodlust for Shin, and that's exactly what it is. That makes a lot of sense to me. I agree. Then he scatters out these shots after the lo long range round, and one of the rounds end up going into the side of Raiden's unit, Werewolf. Yeah. Now let's <laughs> not ignore the fact that also that long range round that went directly mm -hmm. over their heads, mm -hmm. when it made impact. The first thing that we see is Raiden react and say Karina, and then all of a sudden she drops off of his radar. Yeah. So we don't know at that point if she's alive or dead. We nope. also don't know what happened to Anju because as the group was walking away, she just, you know, kills her comms and says, you know, mounts something that we don't know, then yeah. makes another comment, and then it's just a massive explosion. Yep. So. Crazy. And with this round that pierces into Raiden's unit, it pretty much causes an explosion. It damages out two of his legs and one of his front guns. But we see his screen, when it shattered, it went straight into his arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he pulled his arm <laughs> he up glad. to block Frederica. Mm -hmm. You know, and protect her, keep her from getting injured. Yeah. And yeah. in doing so, it pretty much debilitated his right arm almost. Yeah. And she feels sorry for him. And then Shin tells her to get into Fido and locks her in. <laughs> but before she leaves, Raiden gives her the, don't worry, I'll be fine. Yeah. So as Shin and Fido, with Federica in the back, are walking forward, he tells Fido to stop. And Fido starts closing the container on Federica. Actually, I thought Shin was the one that did that. I think no. Shin did like an override. No, he says Fido, and then as soon as he, he stops, and then the shutter. So it could have been just Fido or Shin, but you got to remember oh, how loyal yeah. Fido is. That's true. I mean, mm -hmm. at, at the at the best case scenario, it was something that Fido had pre-planned with Shin. Yeah. Yeah. Then he goes into the details of as she's screaming at him, it's like, you're scared you don't want to lose him, but you want to save him. You're a knight. And she says, survive so you can do that. I think so, that's Shin's way of basically saying that, you know, hey, look, I'm going to have to go kill this dude, but if you want him to live on, he's, you're going to have to remember the good things about him. Yep. You know, li let him live on in your memory. Yes. Only way she can do that is by surviving. Mm -hmm. And as Shin is walking up to Kiri, he starts losing it. And then Shin goes into that state of nothingness. 
I love how these two are just completely in their element. They are psychotic and broken AF. Let's uh-huh. not ignore that fact. Mm-hmm. But they are in their element. There is nothing for these two other than the battlefield. No. This fight is just crazy. But And obviously, we know Shin as his close... Where he goes close range, blank range, takes him out. Mm-hmm. But we come to find out, Kiri is also known for his close range combatantness. Mm. And I was not expecting that what comes out of nowhere... Well, not really out of nowhere, but those tendrils that were dragging behind him when we saw him walking away in the past were actually for close combat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he basically, like, tail whips him. It's devastating that he has that much mobility for a unit that size. Yeah. To do that kind of close quarter combat. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, you would have been on my Empire's side, you, you would yet stand. I'd love to have your power on our side. No dip. No, everybody would. Mm-hmm. And he even makes the comment, you're too strong for that. <sighs> yeah, it's at this moment that Frederica has realized just how evenly matched these two really are. Aside from the fact mm-hmm. that, you know, one's in a very mobile unit, but the other one's in a powerhouse of a tank battle unit. Yeah. But mm-hmm. she she gives the heads up about him being a close quarter combat specialist. And as he's starting to dodge, all of a sudden you have these shots and explosions come out of nowhere and who comes back to save his ass raiden Raiden. of all people holy shit dragging half of his unit along the ground how is he walking a straight line right now he's not he's compensating (laughs) yeah it's like the left legs are counteracting each other it's like what the oh gosh and then we come to find out after Kiri fires the round at Raiden. Shin is down to one round left. And engines are at their limit. Wingmen are all down. I'm all that's left. I don't know if Raiden's dead. I think I think we're all worried at this at this point that of how many of them are dead. If any mm-hmm. of them are dead. Or mm-hmm. if there's any of them that are left at this point. Yeah. Because, and it, honestly, especially Raiden, because yeah. Frederica's response when he was shot at, like, she just screams and loses her mind over it. So I, I yeah. don't, and he he didn't get back in the fight after that either. So it no. leaves me to wonder if his unit was just incapacitated or if he didn't make it. So. Yeah. And after all that, when he's standing there about to make the charge... I got chills up my spine during this moment where he's just standing in the field of those little survey units and doing eye to eye with Kiri. Because definitely when the parade ends up going on the Fritz and some of those voices are very familiar and definitely yeah. one of the words that were said as well, I won't forget. And it sounded like Lena. Mm hmm. Well, which, I mean, you know, she was famous for that line. Mm-hmm. And then we start seeing sparkles of mortars coming, flying through the air. And they look like the same ones that were used when Lena fired them off without permission in the first place. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And the, the only reason I can think the static would cause it is two different signals of para-raids coming into contact. Is the only yeah. way that would probably cause the para-raid to go spritzy like that. I'm I'm right there with you because the 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 parade system that they're using right now is a variant offshoot. It's basically a reverse engineer of the original parade that they were using with the Republic of San Magnolia. Mm-hmm. So th- it is very likely that the signal patterns and everything could be still close enough to interfere with each other. Especially considering the fact that we know that Lena had that uh, augmentation chip that she installed on her para-raid collar. Yeah, so who knows the capabilities it fully has now? Yeah, I mean, we know that it allowed her to open communicate with every 86 that had a Mm para-raid, as opposed to just being frequency locked to her unit. Yep. So if she's broadcasting on that much of a broad spectrum signal, then yeah. Yeah. Obvious interference and uh, cross-signaling 
is going to be a factor. Mm -hmm. And we thought the fight before when Shin was going at him (laughs) was crazy. This just brings it to a whole new scale because he almost got chopped up like Swiss cheese. (laughs) Because of these tendrils. (laughs) Yeah, and the fact that these, what I refer to as like a form of hard light wings, just start to strand and expand and start putting this like protective shell that's also, it's it's offensive as well as defensive because it works as a protective shell, but then it also can uh, whip out and do damage. After he dodges that attack from the hard hard light tendrils, he backs up and he makes the comment of, you're not going to let me get close, are you? Then we get another static, and it's you can't really tell apart the words or the what is being said at the moment until you like pause, go back, and actually vamp up the audio, audio a little bit and pay attention. It's Lena. Yeah, hold on. I'm gonna pop it in. I'm just wondering how much of it is like him hearing the voices in his mind, like memories, or and how much is it she she could actually be tapping in. It's to the it's the parade right? because it's. You hear a static beforehand. And then on top of that, if you look at the animation, his light on his pararade is flickering in and out and changing between green and yellow. Yep. And red means red means he's disconnected. Yeah. Or at least muted. Um, yeah. But yeah, that signal bouncing back and forth between green and yellow as these other sounds are heard, that really leads me to think that it's a signal crossover. <laughs> Did y'all catch it? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I definitely heard it that time. (laughs) It chills. (laughs) And he just sits there. And then this time, the missiles that are fired are with napalm. Sorry, best freaking weapon I've seen. <laughs> like, I love this. It was well, it was smart because when the tendrils cut into it, the um, napalm b- burned it. it. I mean, that just it fell onto it, so it was a yeah. very smart move. Yeah, that's yeah. one of those one way or another. You're getting burned, I'm- whether <laughs> I make impact or you cut me above you. <laughs> you're getting yes. roasted. <laughs> And it has these bird, it, it pops into now with Federica in front of Kiri in the white space, kind of similar to what Shin went through with his brother. Mm-hmm. But right now it's younger Federica. And she's even making the comments like, he shares your blood, it's the only comrade you have. He's like, you know why? Because it's all that I have left. And then it goes to the past of everything. And then a twig ends up getting thrown that he throws in the vision. It's a pretty much a twig, but then it's a pipe, actually, in what real time. And then you hear Federica call out, fool, and he turns over. To see Frederica stand there in the middle of an open field, meters away from the Morpho, with Shin's gun in her hand. Yeah. And she fires it in the air to get his attention and starts yelling at him. And she was like, do you not even recognize the face of your master anymore? But he thinks it. They're holding her captive. Mm-hmm. And he starts to lose his shit even more until she turns the gun to her own head. Yep. I was in shock. Like, pure, unadulterated shock. I was like, if, uh, yeah, this, if this a little, like, what, maybe 10-year-old girl is going to blow her fucking brains out right here on the battlefield? Holy hell. Right now, current, she's 11. Yeah, so I wasn't no. far off. I mean, to watch any kid put themselves in that situation. It's crazy. It's, uh But it also puts him in enough rage and concentration that Shin's able to make some moves, but also the firing from a distance also assists, pretty much reading his moves at this moment. And who, who else would be mm-hmm. that know him so well? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's... There's pretty much no doubt in my mind anymore at this point that the bloody Regina and yeah. her squad have come yeah. to save the day. Because it can't be Andrew, because even if she was able to make, she has no missiles left. Her unit is nothing. 
Well, yeah, I mean, and we saw how long it took Raiden's half-busted unit. Yeah, with her being concussed, it w- that would be even more tricky. But as he's about to pull the trigger to where the core is for Kiri, this scene in the castle with Kiri, Shin, then Shin's brother walking up. Then you see the other two walking out, and Shin's still there. But then even once she runs after him, you see all these other people standing out there. And I think that this was the original uh, populace of the Empire. More than likely. Because this is all her perspective. Mm -hmm. And screen goes black. Then we get the active self-destruct sequence. And we're all standing here and pause. And we're like, get the fuck out, get the fuck out, get the fuck out, get the fuck out. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um... (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Shin just blew a major hole into this into this morphone. Point blank range. And here's the thing, too, is when he landed, he put the spike in to ground himself. Yeah. You know, the same spike that we saw Theo having issues with just, what, last episode? Yeah, and who knows if he had time to purge it then get off. Yeah. <sighs> and then as the explosion goes, all you see is the smoke... In screen. Frederica's face, too. She's a... I'm worried about Frederica as well, because she's... For how big the explosion that thing's gonna give off, she's in range. And she's out on the grass. She has no unit protecting her. The only thing that might be close is, like, Fido. Maybe. Even... Yeah, even if if Fido was able to move fast enough to get in the way of the blast. Yeah, very (sighs) big if at that point. I mean, Graham, we don't know even what then, we don't if, know what Fido's last positioning was, but even still, yeah. But even then, because even if he was able to get there, if there was no way for him to secure himself to the ground, him being flown back would have hurt Federici probably even worse than whatever the explosion probably could have done. Yeah. Oh, God. And the episode title card we get for the next episode, even though it's going to be three months from now, Shin. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like the idea that do. it could be something in memoriam. Like, I don't... I'm not wanting to see that. Nobody is. Any last words into the whole of three months? I guess not. No. I, I don't know how I'm going to deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't do well with cliffhangers like that. And, oh my god. Uh, but as always, hopefully we will be back into streaming next week. Um, this has been 86. I hope you all have enjoyed so far. We're going to take a look to see what we might do in the meantime. Um, we'll probably pick something up or figure something out. But until next time, I am Rain Wolf. This is Kira Silverheart. This is Austin the Silverheart. And leave a like, comment, subscribe, and then remember to check us out on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook when we stream on Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Later. Bye. Bye.